Okay, doke. Okay, yeah. Um, I was making the moves for the the uh, the Russian Second Army over here, and then also trying to figure out how to link them up with the Fourth, um, as well as um, yeah, just trying to figure out how in the world I'm going to link this up with the Grand Campaign, and uh, part of my I guess I don't know. Um, preparation for the live stream on Saturday morning for the uh, the week that was. I was watching some stuff on um, from the Great War, and and then I just go, and then I also go to the chronology of the Great War book and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I I thought you know what maybe you should also uh, take a look and see what was happening happening historically. Um, you know, at this time, f and compare it right now with your war, uh, with uh, your game, and see if uh, possibly um, is there some way of trying to right now start linking things up. Um, so I'm not completely 100% uh, bang on probably with uh, what I think's been going on, but from what I know, what what has been going on, it's almost like a flip flop uh, for the Eastern Front historically. Um, so the Russians were, as you know, not, uh, doing horribly up here. Uh, they were doing really well here. The uh, Germans were being pushed back uh, from their offensive towards here. I think by the Russian 10th Army, if I do believe. Uh, part of it anyways. And of course they don't even exist anymore. And the Austrians had, if I do believe... Um, we're trying to uh, push back towards the Russians here. Uh, that didn't work. And we're uh, being uh, forced back yet again by the, um, by the Russians. Let's see what else was happening. The Ottomans um, had declared war on the Russians. And then the Russians declared war on them. And the Serbians also declared war on them. The Russians now started sending, I think, three armies worth uh, of troops down towards uh, eastern Turkey. Um, there was gonna, there was a big offensive uh, in the Western Front happening. I think, if I uh, watched and read correctly, um, the race to the sea was starting to wind down. Leto Vorbeck. Uh, uh, had just taken Yasin, um, but I think he started cluing in that uh, he had to start ad uh, adapting and he started now getting into guerrilla tactics in earnest. Uh, the Austrians were mounting a second offensive. Maybe these are the ones that were with three armies. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Polar Jorik or whatever, the guy who did the first uh, one, who was in charge of the first one, he was mounting an, a second offensive towards... Uh, in the Serbia, I do believe. Um, and there was also this big discussion, I think, at that time, I guess because of the successes with uh, in East Prussia against the Russians, that, uh, hey, if we send a lot of troops uh, this time, like a heck of a lot of them, uh, we could uh, really wipe out the Russians this time. So I'm looking at it from there, that point of view. Oh, and also supposedly at this point in time, I do believe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm jumping a, a year or two, that's a problem, I'm, you know, got two things going on uh, at the same time. I'm not sure, but maybe I think now already uh, the Austrians are starting to run out of ammunition like there's no flipping tomorrow. I've got some notes actually, I should just go and grab them, hold on, that'll solve that issue pretty quickly. But anyway, so I'm trying to figure out a way of tying this in now. Uh, yeah, at the end of October, Germans were retreating from Warsaw, Austrians were repulsed near Ivanograd, which is uh, right there. Uh, there was lots of action in the Western Front near Ypres. Uh, Austria was very low on ammunition, yep, and they also had a cholera epidemic going on. The Ottomans uh, were attacking Russian ports, and the Germans were planning a huge offensive in Flanders. And then I also say, and then in November it was R Russia declares war, Serbia declares war, uh, Austria pulling back from the river sand towards uh, Shemish. Uh, there was a supposed Russian strategy at this time was a two-pronged two approach, the drive towards Berlin and 
also to split the Austrians apart by attacking between Krakow and Shemish, which would be, you know, around Tarnov, uh, Tarnuf, sorry, Tarnuf. Um, uh, however, the Russian, uh, Russians, at, especially now, uh, as they were getting into Western Poland and the wintertime approaching, this is now November, as we know, uh, Russian rail difficulties was causing them uh, issues getting their supplies and uh, you know logistic issues and they had to slow down they couldn't um, uh, nip at the heels of the retreating Germans I guess um, and also if I'm thinking of uh, uh, Italy Rom oh uh, I think at this time historically as well um, Great Britain had loaned money to the Ro uh, Romanians so that's interesting uh, but they're neutral. Italy's still neutral. Uh, Albania, all that stuff. So I'm looking at it that way, what was happening historically and trying to now tie it in with this. So with the massive successes, uh, or, it's, or I shouldn't say massive successes, I'm getting off into eager land again like I'm turning into that junior officer because I'm, the reality is starting to set in here. It's nowhere near as going to be as easy as, as I thought. Um, but um, maybe that little discussion with Falkenhayn, the Kaiser, and um, uh, Lindorf and uh, Hindenburg, maybe now it would be like, you know what, actually, it's kind of looking like maybe we should um, send some troops this way because the Austrians are doing not too bad and it seems like we're having a massive breakthrough. Also, what does this mean about maybe reinforcements coming uh, towards uh, Galicia for the Austrians. Maybe Conrad is saying, you know what, um, I'm not going to be sending as many uh, reinforcements towards Galicia anymore. Why should I? I don't need to. They're doing great. And we're going to, you know, we're having the second offensive uh, towards Serbia. So maybe I'm just going to stop sending troops that way. Uh, why would I? Uh, so that could have a wrinkle for my world. Um, I was also trying to break apart the grand campaign rules uh, earlier on uh, today, and it seems, yeah, it's, uh, you know, okay, there's naval, there's, there's strategic, um, and then there's the resource, you know, uh, production phase and all that stuff, and then there's the normal, your normal turn. I know there's going to be some other stuff as well, but that basically seems to be it. So I'm like, okay, you know, we'll just focus on one aspects, uh, one thing at a time, uh, and away we go. Um, so that's, like, I'm trying to figure out that bit. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think, uh, oh, you know, as well as if the Russians are doing so poorly now here, uh, would they be able to respond so effectively against the Ottomans? Um at this point, you know, would they be able to send as many troops that way? Um, this is fun stuff, man, for me anyway. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to start tying this in a bit, uh, a bit more. And one of them, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I think one of the biggies for me is going to be, um, I really don't think I'm going to start sending as many reinforcements towards uh, Galicia anymore. Um, Oh yeah, that was the other thing about the grand campaign thing. When he starts talking about calculation, I think I, I missed it by a month. I think it's the beginning of October when you start uh, calculating uh, production and all that stuff. But um, maybe in a weird way, I've already started the grand campaign, and you know, in, in an odd, in an odd way. All right. Hope you're having a great one. Bye.